administrative sections and here just to give you overview right so here if you have a trust let's draw a trust and i have here i'm gonna draw a very simple trust here like this like this like this right here and maybe i have some sort of support conditions like this right here okay and and really the way when you go through and you analyze something like this like a trust like this is the first thing you want to do typically is to calculate external reactions okay external reactions due to load next what you want to do is cut through cut through the truss so that you have only three unknowns left okay so when you make that cut cut through and and typically that's three members okay but you should get cut through three so that you have three unknowns yeah and then you just apply apply equilibrium equations to either the entire left half of the cut or the entire right half of the cut to either side but you have to take the entire structure okay and and that's that's it to solve for unknowns and and really the method of sections is advantageous if you don't need uh the internal force at every location you just want it at one specific location i just want this member and this member and this member right there okay whereas method of joints you go joint by joint by joint by joint to find the member forces everywhere okay all right so let's do a quick example problem we'll go to the next page here all right so i have here this truss here i'm given uh, this kind of under truss i have a pin at a a roller support at f uh, 2,000 pounds of force just on one end right here at point D pointing down right here. And I want to find in this problem, I want to find my forces in member, uh, internal forces, internal forces in members BC, BE, and FE. Is that right? Okay. Then... And, and so here, here let's, let's talk one more time a little bit about method of section. So if I, if, you know, when you look at a beam, like, you know, like from statics and mechanics, you're looking at a beam, right? Right here. Let's put, let's make it a simply supported beam like this. Okay. Like this. And you had maybe like a pulling force here. I'll call that like P. Uh, you had a distributed load here. W. Like this, right? And, and you had sometimes you had a problem that said find the internal loading at point A, right? And so you said, okay, in order to find that internal loading, you first what you should have done is calculate the reactions, right? So you calculate the reactions here and here. Okay, so I'll call this like A X A Y, and then here would have been like the reaction B Y. You would calculate those reactions. So you would have using equilibrium equations on the entire structure, you would calculate those reactions. Then to get the internal loading at A, you would have said, let me cut at A, and you would have chosen either the left side or the right side of this cut. And you would have had to draw out the entire free body diagram. And so if you chose the left side of that cut, you had this right here, like this, some cut, and then you had the A, Y, and A, X reactions right here. And then you had to say, what's my internal loading at A? And you had a shear, a moment, and an axial force at A. And this right here, you would use this diagram and three equilibrium equations to find N, M, and V. Yeah? It's the exact same thing with method of sections. Except now, instead of a beam, you're looking at a truss and you cut through here, and there are three internal member forces, okay? Three internal, which happen to be just single forces, but you still have three equations after you find the reactions here and here. Okay, so let's, that's what we're going to do. Okay, so we go through here, right? Calculate reactions. So one, the first thing we're going to do is calc reactions like this right here. So... Uh, very quickly, let's see, from this diagram, I know I'm going to have a vertical AY. We're going to need a calculator, AX, calculator, and then here, FY, like this, okay? 
forces in those directions. And so let's see, very quickly, if I want to, the way I can calculate Fy is if I sum moments about point A. Okay, so, you know, using that moment equilibrium equation is, is really useful. So if I sum moments about point A for the entire structure, and I say this is positive right here, I would get Fy times 12 feet minus 2,000 pounds times 36 feet equals zero. And that would tell me Fy is equal to 6,000 pounds, 6,000 pounds force. Okay, right there. So I, I have that. I know if I sum forces in the horizontal equal to zero like this, I would get that AX equals zero. That's a no-brainer, okay? And then if I sum forces in the Y equal to zero right here, I'll say this way is vertical right here, I would get AY plus FY minus 2,000 pounds equals zero. And that would tell me that AY is equal to minus FY plus 2,000 pounds of force, which is... Uh, what is that? Minus 6,000, minus 4,000 pounds, okay? And this negative indicates that AY is just pointing downwards, okay? All right? So that's good. Now I got to find, and it's, it's, you know, what, it, what it, in different problems, whatever they ask for is usually a hint to cut here, okay? Now you could solve this problem by using method of joints. Starting from joint D, you solve for, you know, you isolate each joint, you have two equations, two unknowns, and you keep moving on, right? Another thing to do, really, that helps is if you can identify zero force members, okay? Identifying zero force members. Now, does that, does that ring a bell a little bit? Ooh, zero force members. Okay, so here, let's, let's let me to one thing that also helps after you calculate the reactions and solving things is if you can identify, identify zero force members. And it's worth worth a, a glance. All right. So if I, for in this problem here, and this helps reduce some things, but I don't know. If, we we'd probably don't need to do it here. But, but if I look at this right here, in this in this problem right here, okay, uh, and just because maybe you haven't seen it in a while, joint C has a zero force member to it. Okay. So if I took joint C, let me take. I'm going to isolate joint C joint C right here. Here it is right here. And I would have, I don't know what the forces are, okay, right here. But I have, uh, um, uh, let's see, member, this would be the internal force in member CB, the internal force in member CD, the internal force in member CE, right here. Okay. If I sum, in this joint here, if I sum forces in the Y direction or in the horizontal, or I'm sorry, in the vertical, right here, I would get that NCE equals zero because there's no other forces acting on it. And if I had a, a force here, like just acting like this, like external load, then it's a different story, but but nothing. And, and that's generally the case. Once you have a, um, oh shoot, I forgot what it's called, like uh, 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 collinear, right? Collinear forces, then it's, it's uh, you have a zero force member. Reporting again. Okay, and then so, anyways, that that's a clue. We don't even need that information in this case, but that's that's useful for us. All right. So the next thing that we want to do is make a cut, right? So we're gonna make a cut here. Uh, let's say we cut through. So this members B, C, B, E, F, E, right? So we want to cut through these members. Cut through three members. So a good cut would be like this, right here. Okay, that would cut through all three members right here. And you would have, let's see here, if I did that, you're going to draw a free body diagram of either the left or the right. Okay, pick one. Right. All right, so you pick the right. Pick the right one, right? Why would you pick the right one? Well, shoot, the right one has no reactions. It only has that one force, that 2,000 pounds of force. So here, you're going to, so if I, I make that cut, so three is cut and draw. FBD, right here, like this, right here, and you chose the, the right side, 
So here, that right side is right here like that. And so I would have, I'm going to draw like this, right there, right here, like this, and like that. Okay. Yeah, that looks that looks okay. And then I have I have to draw the loading. That was two thousand pounds of force. This was joint C, D, and E. Okay. And here, each of these cuts right here has this is an internal force N C B. This is N E B, and this was N E F. Okay. And I have three equilibrium equations to find these three internal forces. So I have right here, if I, let's see, one of the first things I could do is sum of the forces in the vertical. Okay. Sum forces in the vertical equal to zero. Bam, like that. And that would tell me, um, oh, let's see. Uh, all these were, were 12 and everything was 12, a spacing of 12, okay? And so that meant that this angle right here is, is 45 degrees. Yeah, 45 degrees, okay? And so here, if I sum forces in the vertical, I would just get that, I would have uh, um, NEB uh, sine of 45 degrees minus 2,000 pounds of force equals zero. Right. And so that would be NEB e times the square root of 2 over 2 is equal to 2,000 pounds of force. And NEB is 28, 28 pounds of force. Okay? And it's positive, indicating that direction is correct. And the way that we've drawn these is that we have drew them away from the node. That means the member is experiencing tension. Okay? All right. So here... That was NEB. Now, I could take a moment about a point here and solve for NCB and NEF directly. Okay? I could take one equation right here. So this is the thing that confuses people is when they, when, like, using this, everyone wants to go sum of the forces in the X, right? And you, you do sum of the forces in the X equal to zero like this, and this is, you're going to get, like, minus NCB, minus NEB cosine of 45 minus NEF equal to zero, right? You still need another moment equation. And then they'll take moments about a point, and they might take moments about point C, right? So you might, and this is what students te technically do. You know, they, they, they just look, they only see the drawing here that they've drawn. They'll take moments about point C, and then you'll get like uh, NEB, uh, cosine of 45 times 12 feet, uh, um, ooh, that should have been negative, ne minus NEF times 12 feet, uh, minus 2,000 times 12 feet equal to zero, right? And you'd have to solve, you know, this set of equations. You already know what NEB is. You have two equations, two unknowns, and you'll solve it out. Or actually, you would have, you know, one equation. And this would, this would work, too. Okay, this would work too. But uh, a very good thing to do is, is to draw the dotted lines for the rest of these, the line of action here. Okay. And where these two intersect is joint B. Is that, yeah? Right here? Those two. So if I, instead, I could solve for NEF directly. I could take moments about E as well to get NCB. That's what I was going to do last. But in this case here, if I take a moment about point B, some moments about B equal to zero, and I say this is positive, I would get NEF minus NEF times 12 feet minus 2,000 times this distance. Oops. This distance right here is also 12 feet right here times 24 equals zero, which tells me that NEF is negative 4,000 pounds. Divide, this becomes two right here. Okay. Okay. So NEF becomes negative 4,000 
pounds, indicating that this bottom part is in compression, okay, then I would also, then I could do some of the moments about point E equal to zero right here like that. And when I do some moments about point E, I would just get NCB times 12 feet uh, minus 2,000 times 12 feet equal to zero. And that just tells me that NCB is 2,000 pounds. Okay. And, and so my answers for this problem would be that here, NEF, NEB, NCB. And when you, when you find the internal forces in a truss, you should be more specific than positive and negative values. You should write, when you go back to this truss right here, you should write that, oh, here, let's just summarize it down here instead of drawing it on the truss. You, would, you should write that N, did I label these correctly? Okay, NEF, NEF, you should summarize, summary, NEF is equal to, um, what do we say, negative or 4,000 pounds of force, and you should just write compression, okay? And then NCB is equal to 2,000 pounds of force, and that would have been in tension, and NEB is 28, 28 pounds of force, and that was a positive result, so that would be tension. And that would be our, our summarized result. And that's what we need. Okay?